Good morning. Uh, the title of this episode is Direction, Not Rules, The Walk of Spiritual Life. Um, a lot of people, if not everyone, are in a, involved in a version of self-improvement or self-advancement or seeking to attain some end or to acquire to to become something more or something better for people in classically religious paths of life this is the desire the pursuit of god or the desire to be with god or for certain spiritual traditions the desire to be like god or in fact even become god or become divine over time or over many births and lives in any case um the thing I want to address or focus on is is not is not the contentious little fractious arguments about oh there's a god there's not a god this isn't the point the the point I want to address is that virtually every single person is involved in attaining something higher than themselves even if it's seeking to become something higher than my present self. Uh, it can be as mundane and carnal as just building a good looking body or something like that. But most people eventually uh, seek a more um, elusive and uh, oftentimes spiritual uh, ends and outcomes and desires or pursuits. So, um, what I want to address on this and why I call this podcast Direction Not Rules is, is that on, on these paths of seeking to improve ourselves, seeking to make ourselves better, seeking regimens and disciplines that are claimed to or designed to bring us to our desired outcome, if and if you, we happen to be religious or spiritual that bring us quote unquote closer to God or one with God or or in the quote unquote favor of God or whatever the however the ultimate end design of one's own spiritual self uh, or cosmology or religious system um, very very often if not most often People relate to these paths as a collection of uh, rules. Do this, don't do this. Go to bed early, wake up early. Don't stay up till all hours, don't sleep till all hours. Eat this, don't eat that. Pray at these times, pray in this way, serve serve in this way orient your mind and your attitude and in this way it's very very often and again we could go all the way to the bodybuilder just trying to rearrange cells in a certain in a certain organization in one's physical body all the way to profoundly serious saints working in any of the spiritual traditions uh, no matter which these our innate orientation towards attaining, becoming, or acquiring something higher than we are at present, or an end to which we strive, is very, very often lived in and lived with as a collection of rules and regulations. If I follow this set of rules, I will, in fact, arrive at the goals I set for myself or the ineffable divine, the figure of all love, all grace, all compassion, all beneficence, that regardless of what our goal is, we will, by following these rules, we'll get there. What I want to point out this morning, why I've made this particular podcast called Direction, Not Rules. I was reading this friend of mine again this morning and starts out like this. How do you go about trying to understand God's love? Now, I've already tried to relativize that uh, goal so that, it, so that its application can be embraced by more than theists. 
How do you how do you go about trying to understand God's love? He it goes on to say, first of all, I have to understand something that is above me in some way. So if God is the point, or if or if a higher physique is the point, or spiritual perfection is the point, this is this is higher than what I am now. So so it reads, first of all. I, if I want to go up, I have to understand. I have to understand somebody or something that is higher, or above, or in the direction that I intend to go. He says, even the Messiah has a father. So Jesus, as uh, for people that are biblically oriented, we know that Jesus was in constant conversation with God and oriented himself during his physical life on earth, Jesus oriented himself as completely surrendered to God. God was the was the one to whom even the Messiah looks up to, looks up, has a, has a relational orientation toward which Jesus uh, oriented his life. So, so reading, continue to read. So immediately that's where I would start. Let's say that's our first starting point. Of course, in life, we have bosses and other people in positions higher, but let's be intimate. The best way we can start in general is to uh, examine the relationship with our parents to ourselves. Now, I know this gets to be a little muddy because some people have bad parents and a lot of people have the the relationship with their parents is the very source of all their problems. And um, I'm a little bit conscious of that, despite despite being uh, in, inspired by the uh, what I inherited, what I what I uh, 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 received from this orientation that I'm reading here. That if we can suspend for a moment the vicissitudes and the tragedy of individuals who have bad or abusive parents. If we can even go completely within ourselves, there is something functioning in a parental fashion that uh, provides for us the ideal of what parental care is like. That's, that's the way we're even able to recognize if we do have bad or abusive parents, the only way we're able to recognize that that is not the norm, that there's something awry with that, that there's something off about that, is because there's an inner part of ourself that is actually parental toward myself. It is constantly loving me, constantly trying to protect me, constantly trying to guide and direct my path so that I do not make decisions that bring destructive or bad outcomes to myself. That is a, a sort of inner parental mess. Um, it's, it's doing exactly what a loving, caring, beautiful, ideal parent would do. Be, uh, as you step out to go out on your date at night or whatever it is, be careful, drive carefully. Don't drive if you've been involved in uh, altering your capacity, your judgment in any way. It's these are this comes to us from within ourselves, and it's caring. It's caring. It's it's caring for our protection, for our welfare. For or or else, how about study tonight? Don't go out tonight. Study tonight. Again, that voice from within is parental by nature. It's caring. It's not just a harpy. It's not just a nag. It's trying to make our lives better, trying to set up the circumstances in which we gain more wealth, more popularity, more fame, more facility, more freedom. So it's that very inner quality that is parental by nature to ourselves that, that allows us to even recognize for those, for those brothers and sisters who have the great misfortune of having parents that have caused them troubles in their lives and cause them enduring psychological challenges in their lives. It is, it is the fact that we are constructed with an inner loving parental voice 
that allows us to even recognize, or else how would we even know what a mother should be like or what a father should be like? It's, it's because the ideal exists within. So for those of us that have the blessed, great good fortune and, and grace and blessedness that we really do have loving parents, that, is, that makes it a little easier, a little better to follow this design, which I'm examining this morning, is that if, when, we, when we orient ourselves towards attaining something grand, something great, something infinitely high, like God, or like becoming, becoming a perfect person, or attaining the spiritual powers and state that our regimen is designed to do, what I'm saying is to move away from an orientation of rules toward an orientation of starting with simple positional orientation, that how do I position myself to something higher? So I hope I've been able to um, disabuse this burden of when you say parents, suddenly half the people say, I had bad parents, but uh, allow, this, allow this reading to hold and allow this term to function uh, uh, in its ideal form, regardless of how any of us have suffered in its, in, its, um, in its reality. In order to understand your father, you have to understand yourself first. We have to understand where is my limit? Where do I belong in the relationship? So here I am trying to understand another person, say a loving father, my loving father, but but the way to start in that is to understand myself first. Where is my limit? So it's actually self-examination that is the that is the operative force or the operative orientation in even in relationality. In order I don't if if I want to understand my father, the first thing I need to do is to know myself well, to know exactly what is my limit. And exactly where do I belong in the relationship? That is the very first step towards orienting myself towards something higher. So if I start with my father, then I can begin to do the type of work on myself that ultimately is the very exact same dynamic or very exact same way of, of operating that will ultimately put me in the presence of God. Uh, it's it's almost metaphorical. It's tactile. It's practical. It's it's a training ground. It's 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 not rehearsal. Of course, it's your own dad or your own mom. It's not rehearsal, but it is the it is the the revelator, the screen on which I discover the nature of that movement, me and God. So don't so think so. Then he's, I'm reading again. Just don't, just start with yourself. Don't think about any position that you'd like to achieve or attain. Just think about yourself. I am my father's son. Okay, what am I? Who am I? What is my limitation? How should I define myself? There are natural limits to my responsibility. What are those? What is that? What is the main nature of my responsibility? What is the expectation in that relationship? So if there's a father, there's a son, or there's a father, there's a daughter, there's a mother, there's a son, regardless of whichever you want to pick in the in this uh, gender options here. Basically, basically, if there is a father and a mother, and they're okay, they're not too bad, it's their responsibility to organize the affairs of the family, to pay the bills, to find the house, to get the right size, to buy the furniture. It's not the little, it's not the little one's responsibility. The little one does have a responsibility in the family. So it's my study of myself and through studying what I am first. Okay, this, the guy writes, okay, I'm my father's son. Okay, what am I? Who am I? What is my, what is my limitation? How should I define myself? What are the natural limits of my responsibility? What is the main nature of my response? What is the expectation? The expectation begins to introduce the, the division of, call it the division of labor or call it the division of love. 
The parents have an expectation of me. I have an expectation of them. This is the, this begins to define the relationality. And so I begin to discover, I begin to discover the positional state of something that is higher than myself. And this is the, this is the, an, ex, an exquisite arena or guidelines for how I can begin to attain God, become divine, uh, uh, meet Christ, uh, however you define, uh, however you define the, the ideal pursuits of your own religious or spiritual path. They, they are best started with and lived with and continued with this beautiful uh, uh, place of relational discovery rather than eat this, don't eat this, do that, don't do that, bow only halfway, bow fully, lay on the floor, don't lay on the floor, stand when you're in front of the, when you're in front of the, the baptismal Lord. It's, it's not a collection of rules. It's, a, it's directional and it begins with self understanding. I read again, the basic starting point of the relationship you are trying to achieve, the beginning of understanding everything greater Eventually, even God, ultimately God, starts with this work in the simple examination of what, what is my position? What are the limits of my responsibility? What is the nature of my responsibility? So if my father is too hard for me, then start with my mother. If my mother is too hard for me, start with my older sister, maybe my older sister has expectations of me ab about which I can begin to organize the nature of my responsibility, the limits of my responsibility, my position vis-a-vis, -vis, and I can move toward that. I can move in the direction that is the natural direction of seeking the very highest ultimate things, God himself, God herself, the ultimate. Finally, my friend writes, the fellow teacher of mine. Sometimes you have to take things step by step. You can't always think big all the time, especially if you're really serious, if you want it to be meaningful, if you really want to find quality and achieve quality, then you have to take caution, right? So the beauty of that conclusion to me is that when people are talking about reaching God or understanding God or being with God or trying to be godly, if, if this is going to be meaningful and have quality, we have to know what, in fact, we're actually talking about. We have to have knowledge in the matter. And knowledge in the matter is, is presented here as a possibility of beginning with orienting to something very close, very intimate, very accessible as that which is quote unquote, higher than me. Just like God is higher than me, even my older sister is higher than me if she has expectations for me not to be an idiot or not to behave like that or, or don't come home like that because you know what it does to our parents. Maybe she's the mediator, but it's picking that, it's picking that thing that is caring and loving and guiding and encouraging and informing that's immediate this will be this will create the living stuff of a genuine solid relationship even with god herself god himself all right thanks a lot uh talk to you again soon